this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and today we're going to be looking at this portable TV. This is an Optimus 16-176, sold sometime in the mid to late 1990s. This has been in my family since um, probably the late 90s or so. There's not a whole lot special about this uh, TV, it's just a standard handheld analog TV with a very tiny passive matrix LCD. But, hey, it has a really nice antenna. <laughs> so let's uh, take a closer look at it. I believe this is an 8 inch, I want to say, uh, LCD screen. Supports both UHF and uh, VHF. There's our uh, tuning buttons there. And on the back you get um, the model information. Um, this was sold at Radio Shack. May have even come from the one at Carolina Circle model, um, depending on when we bought it. Has a little uh, stand for propping it up. And on the side here you get your antenna. You get um, your controls here. Off, VHF, and UHF, and a uh, DC plug for plugging into power. And on the other side, you get a brightness control and a volume control, and that's about it. Again, not a very exciting little TV. Oh, I also forgot to show the uh, top. You get a speaker, earphone, and external antenna input. And um, I'll tell you something cool about this TV. Um, this TV has not been used since at least 2009 because that's when analog TV was shut off here in the United States. So once that happened, um, this TV was rendered useless, but for whatever reason, my family never got rid of it. And I'm kind of glad. It's always nice to have these old pieces of technology lying around, even if they're not practical anymore. I believe we mostly used this TV just when the uh, power would go out so we would um, be able to watch the news. And let me tell you what's cool about this uh, little TV. Uh, we'll uh, see if we can open it up here, the battery compartment that is. Runs on uh, one, two, three, four double-A batteries and as you can see here these batteries expired in 2009 and not only are they not leaking they still work <laughs> unbelievable and this thing hadn't been used in at least 10 years batteries still work that's a miracle folks so, um, I'll, I'll turn it on here, um, that's the uh, VHF setting, it does a little bit of auto-tuning there. And UHF, of course, since there's no more analog TV around here, it's not going to pick up anything. I know there are still some very low-powered um, analog stations broadcasting these days, but I don't believe there are any in my particular area. So. You know, um, nowadays, what can you do with this since um, there's no uh, analog broadcasting anymore? You can't really watch TV on it anymore. Well, remember uh, the external antenna input I mentioned a while ago? Well, in this video, we're going to play with that a little bit. So, uh, let me set some things up, and I will be right back. You may recall in a video I did last year um, it, where I showed off my parents' old uh, black and white Lloyd portable TV from 1984 that just like this TV, um, of course it was unable to pick up any analog broadcasting anymore, but it also had an external um, antenna input. And thanks to the help of a YouTube user, I was able to get the correct adapters to tap into that to plug in a composite video source into that TV. Well, 
since this TV has the same plug, we can do the exact same thing. Now right here, um, I've got the little adapter we used in that video last year. I forget exactly what they are, but basically um, this plug right here um, is a adapter that goes from these little leads to a coax. And this screws into this little um, adapter that plugs into the external, external uh, antenna jack on the TV. And you just plug your coax cable into this. And this cable go, is running into the uh, coax output on the Sony VCR. And I've got a composite video source plugged into the composite input on this VCR. So this VCR is pretty much acting as an RF modulator. So, I'll go ahead and connect this into the little portable TV. Of course, it's going to want to sag. Get some more slack there. And... Uh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and turn it on. I believe you have to have it set to uh, VHF for this to work. And it's going to tune in to it in a moment. And as you can see here, it's already um, picking up the video signal. At least I think it is. And there we go. I'll zoom into the screen there. But what you are seeing is my... Uh, Roku Express Plus plugged into this TV. The nice thing about this uh, particular Roku right here is that it still supports composite output. So I can plug it into older equipment like this. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show it um, playing um, YouTube on here. So let me just go to my YouTube app. Again, this is not practical at all. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Well, one, I'm bored. And two, I figure you guys will um, probably enjoy seeing this. And it is very, very, very um, compact and hard to see on here. Because it's such a small screen. And I wouldn't be surprised, yep, this um, YouTube app only outputs um, 16 by 9 video. Even though I've got the Roku itself um, outputting 4 by 3, but the YouTube app only does um, 16 by 9. Which is eh, a little annoying. Let's see if I can load up, I guess... Uh, one of my videos if I can get if I can figure out how to get to my uh, channel on this uh, uh, okay let's try this out uh, this is one of my videos this is from when Elmo 3 and I met up last month Does litter box there, which is, I guess, a good thing. The speaker on this is very ear grating. <laughs> but that's uh, pretty much what you get on an old TV like this. <laughs> old portable TV, that is. <laughs> I can't believe I'm able to do this. <laughs> it's kind of cool. 
And if you want to see this done on the old uh, 1984 Boyd TV, um, well, um, just search for that on my channel um, from last year and check that out as well. Because on that, I was able to even connect it through uh, my uh, Raspberry Pi, which I might try to do in this video as well. I just got to find the right connectors. Let's uh, see if I can fast forward a little bit. There we go. And I can adjust the uh, brightness. And sorry again to my YouTube viewers for <laughs> the very ear grating audio this bit this um, TV is giving you. <laughs> But hey, at least it's a nice proof of concept. Now let's see if I can uh, maybe bring up something um, recorded off of TV in the 90s. I'm going to go to the Roku Media Player and I'm going to see if I can get onto uh, the server on my, the video server on my desktop. Again, this is very difficult to see. Okay. Something that won't get me in too much copyright trouble. <laughs> I'm just going to load up an old uh, commercial from the 90s. Uh, see if I can find a good one. Again, this is incredibly um, uh, incredibly stupid to be doing this <laughs> seeing that you can't even read text on here now well, this will work as an old Packard Bell commercial from 1994 and hopefully it plays in 4x3 So yeah, <laughs> I guess that's something you may have been able to pick up on an original broadcast on this TV. Okay, so I was able to connect my Raspberry Pi up to this TV, which is running um, RetroPie with a bunch of emulators on it, so I figured we would make an attempt at playing a video game on here. Attempt is the uh, key word here. Try and find a good one. Let's see. Uh, guess we can try. Uh, how about if I can find the? There we go. Sega Genesis. <laughs> of course, I can't read the game list. <laughs> Trying to find the Sonic Hedge the Hedgehog game. Okay, it's gotta be one of these. Come out, come out wherever you are. I'm having to go by the uh, preview on the right. Go with Sonic 2. Well, cause why not? That's the controller I'm using, by the way. Mega. 
I imagine this is similar to playing this game on a Sega Nomad, which was a portable uh, Sega Genesis that Sega put out at one point. It doesn't look too bad. Sounds good, too. And it actually looks better in person than it does on camera, believe it or not. So we can at least get through this level. zoom out so you can get a better view of it. So, um, now I've got to find my wireless uh, keyboard and mouse um, Logitech thing, a doodle. Um, here it is. Because I want to show something uh, quite interesting. At least I think it'll be interesting, because um, I haven't tried this yet. And we're going to load up a uh, DOS box on here. <laughs> now, I don't know if I've um, properly set this up yet. ridiculous <laughs> this is ridiculous Windows 3.1 on this tiny little screen like I can't even find the cursor on here yeah, I can kind of see it now I think this is chips challenge And Chip's Challenge is kind of playable on here. Kind of. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Seriously. One more thing I want to try, assuming I can figure out how to get out of Windows here. Yes, I've completely lost it. <laughs> you thought Road 3 was bad enough on a regular computer screen? <laughs> See, I can't... <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, this... <laughs> I'm just digging my own grave here. Yeah, let's get out of DOS box. I'm going to try one more thing here. Yep, Fatty Bear's birthday surprise on this tiny little thing.
This is gonna make me dizzy, isn't it? <laughs> Kind of playable, I gotta be honest with you. I think what's amazing me right now is um, the fact that the uh, batteries are still functioning after all we've done today. My favorite song. <laughs> So yeah, that I guess that'll about do it for this video. Um, I uh, can't believe we were able to do this much with this TV, but it's amazing what you can do with an old TV that has an external uh, antenna input with um, just with the right adapters. So anyway, that'll I guess do it for this video. This is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.